in a time when our stories will be the tales of long ago. Archaeologists will be doing a dig outside the Colosseum of Rome, and they'll unearth many skeletons and start to look at the pieces and collect the data, and they'll notice a change. And they'll write it up in a journal, and it'll be sped over media we can't even imagine, so that the whole world of archaeology is looking at this evolutionary change in awe and running back to look at the pieces in their collection, and sure enough, it's there. And they'll dub it with a name, long and hard to pronounce, a scientific term for this evolutionary change in the structure of Homo sapien. But outside the green monster and out in LA and anywhere in between where games are played, they're all gonna call it the same thing, bleacher butt. <laughs> It comes from all those parents who have children who've gotten into sports and you spend every weeknight and every weekday following one children's sport or another and you're there in the stands collecting pine splinters and cheering for your kids. And I was working on this evolutionary program through my first three and then I came to that fourth child. The first three were girls, they were simpler. The boy is a cowboy. And his sport of choice is cowboy mounted shooting, a rodeo sport. And so I gamely said, okay, and off we've been for six years now. A couple years ago, not very far from here in Tingsboro, we were at a two-day competition. And we camped out the night between his rides. And I got up at one in the morning to use the wonderful plastic dark facilities down at the end of the lane in the dark. And I thought, I'll look at the horse before I go. And he was gone. My son's horse was gone in the middle of the night in a strange town on the far edge of Massachusetts and I could hear the cars whizzing by on Route 3. I raced through the farm and daybreak was nowhere. I called 911. Soon I was on a patch through from the state police to the town police who'd been on the chase of a horse that evening and sure enough we got to join the police chase and follow the cruisers through town to the field where they'd run them in at night and there my son and I went through the tall, deep, soaking wet grass. I fell in the swamp in pursuit of his horse, save his game for tomorrow. And we finally captured him and got back, loaded him in a trailer to go across town. And the guys are like, that's some horse. We radar gunned him at 42 miles an hour down the yellow line. He was drag racing with the fuzz in the middle of the night. He would slow to a trot, and just as the cruisers pulled up alongside, he'd gun it and he was gone. And they said, where'd that horse come from? And I said, that's a Yukon Morgan horse. And that school in the day that he was born there was known as a party school, and he never forgot that. <laughs> The next day, we were at the competition. I thought that horse would be all out of steam. He was in his 20s, but the boy saddled up, rode out onto the field, and I was doing the announcer that day. I'd given up my splinter collection, <laughs> and I called them into the arena. Tim Stearns and jailbreak, it's your turn. And so I continue to cheer for my cowboy, and I'm staying off the benches. <laughs>